Hey there, Detroit sports fanatics. I'm Taylor Phillips, and welcome to Taylor's Detroit Sports on Spreaker. You can also find this and all other episodes of Taylor's Detroit Sports on iHeartRadio. Straight and full Detroit and Michigan sports coverage 100% of the time. If you have any opinions on everything that's going on in the Detroit sports world, call in or send a text message live on the show at 231-429-3668. Also, you can add me on Facebook as Taylor Phillips online at facebook.com slash taylorgatorphillips14. Like my Facebook page, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports page. Join my Facebook group, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports Group. And follow me on Twitter at DT2Phillips with two L's. And welcome to episode 144 of Taylor's Detroit Sports on Spreaker and iHeartRadio. I'm Taylor Phillips. I'm going to change things up a bit and talk about the Tigers. Today they just beat the Atlanta Braves 12-6 at Buena Vista. They they dropped a seven spot in the fourth inning, scoring seven runs. They scored the first they they scored the first four runs of the game in the first inning, tolling that up to an eleven nothing lead through three and a half innings. The Braves got on the board. with a uh, sack fly by Daniel Castro. John Buck, a former Kansas City Royal, hit a two-run double to make it 12-3. But Daniel Fields hit a bomb to center field to make it 13, uh, make it 11-3. Daniel Fields made it 12-3 with a solo shot to center field, a bomb, says Chris McCoskey on Twitter. The Braves put up two more two more runs in the second. Two more runs in the second. From, with, with two RBI singles from Michael Jones and Todd Cunningham. And then Michael and then Michael Jones. Yeah, Michael Jones doubled uh, uh, Michael Jones hit an RBI double in the bottom of the night to cap out the scoring. Justin Verlander pitched two scoreless innings and got got a win. He he improved on his curveball. He said, "Quote: Been an emphasis this spring. I threw more than normal." In Kissimmee, Florida, Johnny Gomes doesn't uh, from Chris McCoskey of the of the uh, 
Detroit News, headlining Verlander baffles with with the Braves with bat, Verla, Verlander baffles Braves with curves. That's curveballs. Tigers win 12 to Tigers win 12 to six. Johnny Gomes pro, starting off with this. Johnny Gomes probably doesn't need to file away any notes from his second inning at bat against Justin Verlander on Saturday. I'll get the I'll get to the Anthony to the Anthony Ghost stats in just a minute after this and, uh, after I read this article and read the rest of the scoring summary here. Verlander said, "Quote: Yes, yeah, that's not a normal sequence there." Unquote. Verlander threw Gomes four straight curveballs, all a 78 mile per hour, and then a, and threw a 92 mile an hour fastball over catcher Alex Avila all the way to the screen. On the seventh pitch of the at bat, Verlander got Gomes to chase yet another curveball for strike three. Verlander, quote. Verlander said after throwing two scoreless innings in his spring in his spring debut, quote, the curveball has been an emphasis this spring. I've been pleased with it so far, and I was pleased with it today, unquote. As the Tigers were in the process of a 12-6 route over the Braves, Verlander threw 41 pitches, 20, 27 of them in the second inning. Of those 41 pitches, 19 were fastballs ranging from 89 to 94 miles per hour and 15 of them were curves. Curveballs. Quote, pretty good. Unquote was Verlander's self-assessment. Quote, I threw more breaking balls than normal just to see how it was. I got pretty good results with it, even the ones that were short, like 56, 57 feet. Guys were charging until the last second, and I got a couple of strikeout, and I got a couple of strikeouts on it. I got a couple of bad swings on the changeup, and the fastball for the first start of the spring was all right. Unquote. He allowed one single to Todd Cunningham and two walks. He struck out Daniel Castro on three pitches, curve, fastball, curve, with the bases loaded to end the second. Manager Brad Osmus said, "Quote Ver." Ver looked good. Ver, as in Verlander, Ver looked good. His curve was outstanding. It was tighter, harder. He used it a lot by design. It was it, by design. It proved to us and to him that it was what we thought it was in the bullpen sessions. It looked really good. Unquote. So there's lots of evidence that Verlander's curveball is getting a lot better. Unlike David Price. Continuing on here, unlike David Price, Verlander hasn't changed his grip on the curve, but he has worked hard on he has worked hard on how how the pitch leaves his hand. Osmus said, "Quote: Verlander is trying to keep the curve from popping up out of his hand because that's what hitters that's what hitters recognize. If you could keep it low out of your hand, you are more you are more likely to fool the hitters and get them to bite." thinking it's a fastball, then it breaks. Unquote. That's how a curveball should be thrown. Professionally. That's what Verlander was talking about. Even on the pitches he was throwing short, the hitters were still tracking it like it was a fastball. And speaking of his fastball, he wasn't worried that they were coming in mostly in the low 90 mile per hour range. This is a really good article by Chris McCoskey. <laughs> Chris McCoskey, by the way. Verlander said, quote, I'm not a guy, not since my rookie year, to come out and throw 98 the first game. I'm a guy who likes to start slower and build it up. You don't look at those games as being opening day ready. It's obvious this was a first game for a reason. You have to, you have to work out the kinks and knock the rust off, unquote. Verlander admitted that it was a struggle at times last season to maintain his normally unshakable confidence. You have to will yourself to be good 
and I wasn't last year, quote unquote. He said, quote, that that kind of motiv that kind of motivated me this off season. You just have to stay confident after every start, whether it's good or bad. You have to say, okay, let's go on to the next one, and hope it clicks. I want to get back to pitching the way I can. Unquote. The Tigers ruined the Braves' debut of right-handed, right-hander, that right-hander Shelby Miller, acquired for Jason Hayward last November. Miller was, Miller last only one third of an inning. He gave up four runs. That was in the first inning. Jonas Cespedes, uh, who finished 0 for 4 in today's game, batting 143. Total thus thus far this spring in Grapefruit League play reached on a fielder's choice on a ground ball hit to third. E driving in Ian Kinsler that gave Cespedes an RBI. So Cespedes finished 0 for 4 with an RBI, and then. And then Alex Avila, about a couple of batters later, drew a bases loaded walk to make it 2 0. And then Hernan Perez, the backup second baseman, the backup shortstop, who was filling in for a. for Jose Iglesias, who had has a bruised right shin which is unrelated to his his past stress fractures in his shins hit a two-run single did Hernan Perez to right field making it four nothing Tigers Uh, the inning all started with, with an Ian Kinsler double to the gap in left center. Anthony Ghost uh, got his first got his first of two hits, hitting a single, which set up Cespedes' uh, RBI fielder's choice to fielder's choice RBI fielder's choice to ground uh, RBI fielder's choice ground ball to third. The Tigers then put put the game away with a seven-run fourth inning, highlighted by, by a highlighted by a two-run double by Nick by third baseman Nick Castellanos. Then Hernan Perez stepped up to the plate and hit an RBI single. Josh Wilson then then chipped in and hit a two-run single, and then Anthony Ghost again hit a single, scoring hit another hit his second of two singles, which drove in two more runs. That, in other words, that's a two-run that's a two-run single as well, making it eleven to nothing. Ghost continues to impress in all phases. He is now 7 for 11 at the plate. 7 for 9 against right-handed pitchers. Wow. His speed forced a quick and errant throw in the first inning. And his range in the outfield seems to be as advertised. Like I, like I posted on Facebook and Twitter... He continues to prove all the doubters wrong. Many people, many people said during the off season that Anthony Ghost would still not, still not hit very well. But there's one thing that really bothered me. I listened one at one point when I listened to Detroit Sports 105.1 discussion with Matt Derry every weekday from noon to 3 on 105.1 
Met Deary. Sounded even more negative when he called Anthony Ghost a windmill. Ah, shut up, you idiot. What? Oh. Hey, listen to me, huh? You idiot! I tag I tag his Facebook profile and and um and pointed out the stat pointed out the stats that Anthony Ghost went set seven for eleven. Let's see here. Anthony Ghost is 4 for 7 thus far in Grapefruit League action before today's game, and Matt Deary, as tagged on the as tagged on Facebook, calls him a windmill. I also typed in typed in the post relief pitcher Alex Wilson had a 191 ERA as a relief pitcher in the majors last year with the Red Sox, and Deary calls him a, a quote, small sample size, unquote. I said, can you imagine? Wow, in in capital letters. And Matt Deary commented on my on my status, Taylor, come on now. Baby, how long are you going to keep whining like a child? You're just a crybaby, a coward. I mean, can you imagine? I'm asking you people, can you imagine? Matt Derry still still degrading and Ignoring Anthony Ghost and Alex Wilson. Ah, shut up, you idiot! What? Oh. Hey, listen to me, huh? You idiot! That is not what I want to hear. What's your problem there, pal? Can I get a bit of sleep? Don't bug me. I don't know if I don't even know if Matt Derry is even paying attention to the spring training stance at all. Or, I mean, it, it's part of his job as a sport as a Detroit sports talk show host. Although he's from, although he's a Syracuse alum from New York, same from the same state Tom Mazaway is from, it, which doesn't really matter at all. If they're gonna. If they're going to host Detroit Sports 105.1, they better show more. They better do more uh, Detroit sports homework and research, and stop laying, and stop talking about the Syracuse Orangemen, okay? Quit wasting our time posting things about your Syracuse Orangemen. Syracuse Orangeman Dairy. By the way, Shane Green will start tomorrow. Joaquin Soria also needs work in to get some work in. The Tigers haven't gotten haven't given him a chance to play a game in, in spring training this year. As of yet, they need to. Tomorrow is the time. But back to Derry, he's still wasting his time on uh, uh, posting posting stuff about the Syracuse Orangemen men's basketball team instead of uh, the Red Wings, for example. That's my next topic. The Red Wings...
score the first two goals of the game last night at the Joe at Joe Lewis Arena, and then they and they were up and they got the ball rolling. It, it seemed like they got got the ball rolling until Brendan Flipping Smith. What's your problem there, pal? Can I get a bit of sleep? Don't bug me! Brendan Smith, Brendan Flipping Smith, committed a, a stupid interference penalty. And Sean M Monahan made him pay by scoring a power play goal. And the Flames trailed two to one after one period. Brendan Smith now has 60 penalty minutes. Has served 60 penalty minutes, 60 minutes in the in the penalty box this season, compared to his 68 last year. I mean, it's only March 7th. It's only March 7th. I've, and I have a feeling Brendan Smith is gonna, going to uh, continue to rack up the penalty minutes and, and, and stay on pace for a bit over 80 points. Oh, I mean, 80 penalty minutes. And it's hurting the team, like his two, like his two-minute interference penalty, hurt the team all in all, entirely in that game. From there, the flame, the flames took the momentum through the first intermission, and and kept rolling, scoring two goals in the second period. One of them from Yuri Hoodler, the former Red Wing. to lead 3 to 2 after two periods and the red wings outshot the flames 27 to 15 I mean Howard and the defense weren't good at all tonight either but the one thing that kicked in like I said like I just said Brendan Smith's interference penalty. Brendan Smith is such an idiotic fool. Hey, listen to me, huh? You idiot! Yeah, you idiot, Brendan Smith. You are such a bonehead, you have no pride whatsoever. You don't you do not belong in this team. Ken Holland should have traded you and Stephen Weiss to the Maple Leafs for Dion Phaneuf. Flames scored two more in the third period. The Wings would only would only put six put six shots on goal in the third period and fall flat five to two. Hoodler scored an empty netter to finish with two goals. After giving up the first two goals of the game, Jonas Hiller stood tall, and made 22 saves to improve to 20-17-3 on the season. The Flames blocked 21 shots, including 12 in the final 40 minutes. Calgary Flames defense is uh, the Calgary. The Calgary Flames were lit up by that Monahan power play goal just because of that Brendan Smith interference penalty. Brendan Smith is a disease! I'm gonna read my, uh... I'm gonna read my, uh, blog article to you guys. 
headlining, there is, there's actually no defending Brendan Smith, period. Recently, before the NHL trade deadline passed by, the Detroit Red Wings were in talks with the Toronto Maple Leafs about a possible trade involving Wings defenseman Brendan Smith and Leafs defenseman Dion Phaneuf. That also included Stephen, center Stephen Weiss. Holland then reportedly said, Ken Holland, the GM, reportedly said he was done making trades after trading for left winger Eric Cole from the Dallas Stars and right handed shooting defenseman, right hand shooting defenseman Merit Stadlitsky from the New Jersey Devils. That meant that Holland decided not to trade Brendan Smith away from much better defenseman in Dion Phaneuf. Holland decided to keep the major virus, Brendan Smith, on this team, and I got really ticked off. I mean, the Wings still could have traded Brendan Smith to the Leafs, who wanted him, the Maple Leafs wanted him, for Dion Phaneuf. Smith's still young, you say, Andy Shambo? You say to me in, in person? How dare you? Hey, listen to me, Hussey, you idiot! The other young players on this roster have played a lot better than, than Smith has, and Smith is still not improving, not in any category. He's not Nick, He's not Nicholas Cronwall either. Cron, Cronwall's made terrible mistakes too, but according to statistical research, Cronwall has not racked up as many penalty minutes as, as Smith has. Cronwall committed 30... Served 37 and two -third penal two thirds penalty minutes per game the past six years thus far. Smith 68 last year, higher than Cronwall's highest in a single season, which is 54 in 0607, and 56 thus far this year, also higher than Cronwall's highest in a season. 124 total in the past two seasons for Smith, and it's costing the team and it's costing the team big time. Terrible. And although Jonathan Erickson may have had a couple rough seat, a couple rough years in that category, Erickson usually averages just 38 and a half sharp penalty minutes. Smith has averaged 62 thus far in his last two seasons, including this season. Erickson's rough seasons in penalty minutes were not consecutive. Smith's two rougher seasons are cons Smith's two rougher cons uh, Smith's Smith's two rougher seasons in terms of penalty minutes are consecutive right now. Two straight consecutive rough seasons. You can't use that as, as an excuse. Ken Holland decided to keep Smith. You gotta believe me. I hope all of you Wings fans read this clearly and understand this. There's no defending it and no debating it either. None. And no, I'm not... And no, I'm never going to give Smith a break. He also keeps whining and crying to the refs every time he takes a penalty, which is Sidney Crosby-esque. Crybaby! How long are you going to keep whining like a child? You're just a crybaby! A coward! What an absolute moron. Hey! Listen to me, Hussie! You idiot! Everyone else on this team is not as moronic as Brendan Smith always was. It's time to turn him from an from an it's time for Ken Holland to turn Brendan Smith from a restricted free agent to an unrestricted free agent after the after the final season which is this season of his waste of a contract and cut him loose, release him. Now he's now he's still young but he's never improving in any category especially in penalty minutes and total points, goals and assists, unlike all the other players on that on that roster. You still think nobody wanted Smith? The Maple Leafs wanted him. It was Ken Holland's decision to keep him. It's not the money either. Just a bad decision only because he got his right-handed defenseman Merit Merrick Stidlitsky. That should that shouldn't have been taken for granted so much. And if Smith would ever improve in any category, especially in reducing penalty minutes, he'll do it on another team's time in the future. He needs to go, period. If he doesn't anytime soon and continues to rack up the penalty rack up the penalty minutes like he always does, Ken Holland will regret keeping him for a very, very long time. 
very long, long time. Smith is the, Smith is the only player on this team that even head coach Mike, Ke Mike Babcock cannot develop one bit. Oh, wait, I get it. Holland wanted to wait until till the summer offseason to release Brendan Smith and get Dion Phaneuf. Wrong. Should have done it before the trade deadline instead. The Wings play the Bruins Sunday at 12.30 on NBC. Time's running short. I gotta get to the Pistons here. James uh, from DetroitBadBoys.com Packy, Brian Packy on Twitter. Pistons versus Rockets final score. Guarding James Hard is hard. Guarding, guarding James Harden is hard. Making baskets making baskets is harder. Actually it's not. It, it actually it's not if you're in the NBA. It shouldn't be that hard at all. If, you, if you're that agile, talented, and more accurate at shooting, you should be you should enter the you should be drafted. You should play in the NBA. No offense to uh, Brian Packy, but uh, that was a douchey type uh, article. Cry baby! How long are you going to keep whining like a child? You're just a cry baby, a coward! James Harden and the Houston Rockets worked the Detroit Pistons on Friday night, despite what the final score, 103 to 93, 103 to 93, might otherwise suggest. It was the Pistons' fifth straight loss, dropping them four games back at the number number eight seed in the Eastern Conference. After a back and forth start to the game, the Pistons managed to play really solid in really solid basketball for oh maybe all of eight all eight minutes the rest of the game. Keeping the game in single, digit, single digits going into the second half, the Pistons jumped out to a strong start. In, in the third quarter, going on an 8-2 run and pulling within a basket about five minutes in. One may have even sensed the Pistons were going to turn the game around. Unfortunately, Andre Drummond, who was showing signs of life, dis disrupting many of the rocket shots in, inside picked up his fourth foul on an erratic and, and out of control drive to the basket and had to go to the bench from there Harden and the Rockets took off the Rockets outscored the Pistons 20 to 11 the rest of the quarter and uh, the rest of the quarter behind Harden's 11 he finished the game with 38 points 14 of which came on his 18 free throw attempts that was that was that was one more than all of all of the Pistons' attempts. He also had had 12 assists and 12 rebounds. That's a triple double. In the fourth quarter, the Pistons could not buy a bucket of popcorn from the concessions with all the money they're paying Josh Smith, much less a bucket from beyond the arc. They didn't score till spring forward and and fell behind it by as many as 24. They shot redacted redacted from from three and it would have been under redacted percent if Cartier Martin didn't come on in garbage time and salvage some percentage points. Here's a list of Pistons who are generally awful in the game. Andre Drummond four for 16 foul trouble and pouting although he did although he did have 21 rebounds. Wait what 21 rebounds? Contavious Caldwell Pope, 0 for 6 from 3. Reggie Jackson, after starting 4 for 5, he was 3 for 11 and had 4 turnovers. Anthony Tolliver, holding down on the B button too long when he shoots 0 for 6 from 3. Spencer Dinwiddie, hard and hazy. Don't know, don't know what that means. I need the stats from, from I need the, the stats from Spencer Dinwiddie. Karan Butler, old. 
Come on, that's an excuse. Ah, shut up, you idiot. What? Oh. And Sean Williams looks like he has zero clue what he's doing out there most of the time, constantly being told what to do. That's just about everybody on the team. Greg Monroe led the Pistons with 19 points, 8 rebounds, 4 steals, 3 assists, and a block. Classic Moose. The Pistons all the pis, the, the Pistons almost reached Don't Look Now territory in the final few minutes of the game, pulling within eight of, with under a minute to go, but KCP, guess what? Missed a three like every other three he took in the game. Like every other three Like every like every other three he took in the game. Rockets sealed it at the free throw line with more Pistons misses mixed in. Box score if you dare. Now your thoughts. I posted I posted this Detroit Bad Boys article on my on Taylor's Detroit Sports page. Eight and a half minutes to go. Pistons play the Charlotte Hornets in a single home game tomorrow night at six on Fox Sports Detroit and Detroit Sports 1051. And if you're in the northern Michigan area, they're going to be on 101.1 FM WGRY in Roscommon. Because the Red Wings play on 101.1 at 1230 on NBC as well. And uh, on all the other Detroit Red Wings radio network affiliates, Ken Cal and Paul Woods on the radio, Mike Emmerich, Eddie Olchuk, and Pierre McGuire on the radio. The Red Wings are going to be on NBC for three straight Sundays. Keep in mind, now going to college basketball. The Michigan State Spartans just barely hold on for a 74-72 win at, in Bloomington over the Indiana Hoosiers. They clinched the number three seed in the Big Ten Tournament. The game started at noon on ESPN. Michigan State over from from Kyle Austin at NLive.com. With Michigan State leading by two after a missed free throw by Travis Trice, Spartans guard Denzel Valentine fouled Indiana's Yogi Ferrell, apparently thinking the Spartans were up by three points in the game's final seconds. Ferrell made the first, but missed on the second with two seconds flat left and Michigan State survived for a 74-72 win Saturday afternoon at, at Assembly Hall. After dropping, after dropping two straight last week to fall to the NCAA, NCAA bubble, the Spartans now take back-to-back -back strong wins into the postseason following a home win over Purdue Wednesday. With the win, Michigan State clinches the number three seed in, the ne in next week's Big Ten Tournament. The Spartans will open play Friday night at Chicago's United Center after earning a double bye. The Spartans played without Brandon Dawson and had one of its worst three-point shooting outings of the season, but got some key contributions from unlikely sources. Reserve guard Alvin Ellis scored a career-high 16, and freshman forward Marvin Clark had 14. The duel came in the game averaging a combined six points per game. The Spartans came into the game unsure of the status of D Dawson, who recorded 13 points of, and 14 rebounds, a double-double, when the Spartans beat Indiana by 20 at Breslin Center in early January. Dawson left Wednesday's game against Purdue after taking an elbow to the head and was labeled as questionable leading it up to the game. He warmed up and sat on the bench in uniform but never checked in. Yet, even without him, the Spartans were able to beat the perimeter heavy Hoosiers up front and win the rebounding battle 40 and 35. Matt Costello had eight boards. Trice finished with 20 points, including 17 in the second half, marking the third time in the last four games he has scored at least 20. Despite making just three of 13 three pointers in the first half, Michigan State played point for point with the Hoosiers and tied the game on a late shot before the first half. The first 20 minutes featured eight lead changes and nine ties. Starting with the possession that featured two offensive rebounds and ended in a three-pointer, Michigan State went on a nine-point run to take a five-point lead. Indiana, brief, 
Indiana briefly led a minute later before Trice recorded a fast break dunk and a pair of three-pointers to give the Spartans the lead for good. Going to Michigan. They route Rutgers 79 to 69 at Chrysler Center. They clinched the number nine seed in the Big Ten tournament. Piecing together a 40-minute assault of visiting Rutgers, Michi Michigan finished with a 79-69 win over the Scarlet Knights. The victory on senior day at Chrysler Center and featured Max Bielfeldt, the team's lone departing graduate, posting his first career double-double with 14 points and 11 rebounds. While Bielfeldt, Bielfeldt was the feel-good story, Aubrey Dawkins stole the show. The guard became the first U of M freshman since Trey Burke to, three, to reach 30 points in a game, scoring 31 on eight mate three-pointers, one short of U of M's school record. The Wolverines' opponent thir in Thursday's second-round game will be determined Sunday when Illinois, Illinois plays at Purdue. With a win, the Illinois will lock up the, seventh, the number seven seed and push Indiana into the number eight spot to face Michigan. If Illinois loses, it'll face U of M in Chicago as the number eight seed. Cameron Chapman hit, hit three, three straight threes for Michigan and Zach Irvin, and Zach Irvin as well. Dawkins scored for 14 first half points. This one, this article from MLive.com's Brendan Quinn. Chapman and Irvin finished with 13 and 12 points, 25 combined. Rutgers pieced together a late 19-0 run to close the game and still lost by double digits. Now the Detroit Lions, real quick. From Justin Rogers of MLive.com, Detroit Lions 2015 free agency preview, wide receiver options include deep threats and special teams upgrades. Position wide receivers under contract Calvin Johnson, Col Golden Tate, Corey Fuller, Ryan Broles, TJ Jones, Andrew Peacock, and Sky Dawson. Team's free agents Jeremy Ross. He was tendered for a one year deal with the Lions, so he's no longer a free agent. Top NFL free agents Randall Cobb. He, he signed a four year extension with the Packers. $40 million. Keep your. Jer Jeremy Macklin, Michael Crabtree. Tory Smith. Keep your eye on Daenerys Moore, Lance Moore, Dwayne Harris of the Cowboys, and Ted Ginn. Breakdown in a world where salary cap restraints didn't exist, Jer Jeremy Macklin would be a perfect fit. A speedster who can play in the slot rarely allows a catchable ball to hit the turf and can really vertically stretch a defense. He would put Detroit's receiving court core over the top. But that's unrealistic. After Des Bryant and Demarius Thomas got franchised, Macklin might be the top option on the market. And with the and with big money already tied up in Calvin Johnson and Golden Tate, the Lions will, will be bargain shopping if they want to add, add another receiver. Detroit's third options didn't do much season didn't do much last season. Jeremy Ross underwhelmed as the was underwhelmed as the primary slot receiver. And while he's flashed explosiveness, he isn't an elite return man. Corey Fuller is still a work in progress and struggled to, to, tra to track the deep ball, which limits what he can bring to the offense. And Ryan, Ryan Broles is stuck in purgatory with a coaching staff that can't figure out how to use him and Tate at the same time. Dwayne Harris and Ted Jinn could provide an upgrade to Detroit's return game. Beyond handling hit kicks, Harris also led the Cowboys in special teams tackles in 2014 and is viewed as an outstanding blocker on offense. Den Denarius Moore and Lance Moore are burners with a history of getting behind the last minute level of the defense. Denarius is younger and bigger and but has some durability issues. Lance will be 32 years old when the season starts, but a success in New Orleans as a secondary target gives him some appeal. That's going to do it.
Thanks for downloading and listening. TTFN, Todd's off for now. I think we can close the logo now.